Okay, there's the Mona Me shop, and then there's this massive swimming pool. I mean, it was a massive, massive swimming pool, and you'd have Lou Goldstein on, on the microphone, and it'd be in the middle of a diving show, right? Yes. And there'd be a guy on this really, really high, and Lou would do this description of, you know, what the guy's oh, going to do with two one, pike, with one. one. We had the... And then right before he went, Lou would go, watch. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, but he, uh, it was interesting because we had a lot of the collegiate uh, divers Diving, yeah. who were able to come up and uh, not forfeit their amateur status because yeah. they just were, you know, they were working on the pool deck or whatever. And it was amazing. Then they had at the skating rink, uh, oh, Irving Chaffee, yeah. Irving Chaffee, and then they'd have the Lobel brothers because they yeah, do the yeah. battle yeah. jumping. You know what else? And he, Irving always was on Saturdays wore the fox suit with the fo dollar with bills the dollar for the children so they could go and get behind. the money. And then I've got some pictures in my office. I, I don't know how many pictures I have in my office that were taken at Grossinger's with a friend, with Whitey Ford or Elson or one of the ball yep. players or, or one of the comedians or one of the stars. Uh, it, it was. It was a it was a unique place in a very unique. But you're right. It, it it wasn't the real world. No, no, it's not. No, it was it was our real yeah, world. Yeah, but it wasn't a real. It world. It wasn't a real world. No. But uh, it was wonderful for everybody who participated. Extraordinary memories. I mean, I re I remember when I was a kid. It was far different than when you were growing up, and uh, the people would come in and they would stay the summer. Right. Or we would check in uh, 1,200 people on a Sunday, no. and you couldn't, you had to stay for a week. Right. I mean, that was just, the, the whole area was right. that way. I mean, that's the right. just demand we had. Right. And it was, uh, I remember the way people used to dress. Right. And of course, they wore, the men wore the Countess Mara ties, right. which you had, your mother had a little bit right. to do with, she and Hilda. And it was, it really was wonderful. And I think as we grow older, we appreciate it more. I think I think those of us that really experienced it have always appreciated yeah. it. Well, I guess now that I'm retired and I'm not involved with the management and everything, I can look back on the memories and enjoy what was. It was it was just an ama it was an amazing place, and and I think for those who will see this and reach out and think about their experiences there. These are universal experiences people oh, yes. have there. They're oh, universal. Yes. And you could go on and on about going down to the lake. You know, or and, you know, and wherever you go, I know David and I were in uh, Sydney, Australia. And we went to the, in a small Jewish museum and we went and we started talking to the lady. And she said, where are you from? And we said, well, from Boca Raton, Florida. She says, did you always live there? And I said, no. I said, uh, we lived up in the Catskills. She says, the Catskills? I said, yes. I said, do you know it? She said, yes. I went to a hotel there called Grossinger's. <laughs> and then, of course, I showed her my business card. Right, right. And uh, so it was known all over. No question. No and question. It, was, it was a great place for people to get along with people of different races, different right. religions. And right. my mother was absolutely a standard bearer for that. Right, well there was a time, one of my earliest recollections of the hotel was when Robert Kennedy came. Yeah. Right, Robert Kennedy yeah. came and, and came to your mother's house and I remember there was a, I guess it was a motorcade of sort, we went yeah. out to the airport and drove back and there of was course. a reception for him there. And there was so, there was just so much of that kind of thing there. And I, as my father would tell me, because when I was experiencing the hotel beginning in the 60s, because I was born in 1955, you know, if, if you walk through the halls, right, and then the yeah. halls were plastered with all, all of the, the pictures of the history yeah. of who came and went at the hotel, you know, my understanding would be the hotel really hit its apex really in the 40s. It was, it was the, it was the Las Vegas of the entertainment world. And you know what else? It was it was at a time when so many of the resorts in America were restricted. I mean, they made no bones right. about no right. Jews and dogs allowed. Right. In fact, when we bought the Pancoast in Miami, 
the people who owned it had a sign that said no the Jews and, no and dogs. dogs allowed. Then they started to allow yeah. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yes. Uh, and they can bring their masters. 